Uh, Europe has some absolutely wonderful uh, executive education programs. Uh, here in Spain, you have IESE and Empresa and ESADE. Um, I was at London Business School for a number of years. Uh, at Wharton, we have an alliance with INSEAD. So there are some absolutely great executive education programs in Europe. Um, but there's also change underway. I think one of the major changes is that increasingly uh, we're being asked to uh, deliver globally. And so um, either we are sending faculty to China or India or Abu Dhabi or whatever, or we're engaged in alliances. And at the moment, probably our most important alliance is with INSEAD uh, in that we're doing executive education with them, faculty exchange, student exchange, and so forth. Um, but I think uh, for business schools these days, we have, to, we have to be global in the way we think about things, and we have to be able to uh, meet the needs of, of global companies who are looking for uh, solutions throughout the world. Companies are looking for total solutions. And um, some of this is coming out of the recession and global crisis where companies have cut back on corporate universities and, and the number of people they have working in executive education. And so they're turning to us and saying, we'd like you to do the needs assessment. Uh, we'd like you to do the program design, the delivery. And we'd like you to evaluate it and prove uh, that it's a value to the business. So I think that uh, going forward, uh, increasingly we're being asked, and, and perhaps in Europe as well, uh, we're being asked to uh, deliver total solutions to corporations. Again, companies are coming to us, and although for the most part they want face-to-face -face executive education, um, very often they're also looking for a blend. They would like us perhaps to do a module initially with their executives. Executives would then work online on projects in between and perhaps then they'd come back to campus for, uh, for an additional module. Um, or there'd be some other form of online or distance learning uh, that would be going on. Um, so I, th I think that um, this will continue to evolve, technology will continue to evolve, and it will become more important as part of the executive education uh, model. When it comes to the endowment itself, um, I think the best rule of all is diversification, and I think it's, there's no uh, uh, asset manager who succeeds in the very long run by having one particular philosophy. I think some of these people succeed for a while and then things change, the environment changes, sentiment changes. And so it is important, I think, um, to have a diversified portfolio, which University of Pennsylvania uh, indeed did have. Uh, the second thing is that we had liquidity and uh, very deliberately our chief investment uh, officer had created a certain amount of uh, liquidity and always has a certain amount in treasury bills. And that provided protection uh, in the last couple of years. Some of our uh, peers didn't necessarily have that liquidity. Um, then more specifically, uh, University of Pennsylvania Endowment was in um, uh, high, uh, high value uh, premium companies, let's say. And that investment philosophy worked quite well in the last couple of years. Um, we were in these high uh, value companies and we were also moving into alternative investments such as real estate uh, and hedge funds, but, but much more carefully uh, than some of our peers. Um, and perhaps as well we were somewhat lucky uh, in all of this, but we came through uh, the crisis uh, reasonably well. Uh,